Welcome to the Art of Server, and welcome back to the Forbidden Arts of ZFS series episode 3. If you're new to this channel, be sure to check out the previous episodes in the series. As in the previous episode, I'm going to start this video with a warning and disclaimer. The Forbidden Arts of ZFS is a series of videos where I will demonstrate how to use ZFS in very unconventional ways. The methods and techniques shown in these videos may not be safe for you to use it with your own data. There may be undisclosed reasons why you should not do the things I do in these videos. What you see in these videos should be considered for entertainment purposes only and do not try these things at home. Should you choose to copy or imitate the things that I do in these videos, you may be putting your data at risk and you are fully responsible for your own data. Any actions you perform after watching this video is at your own risk and I shall not be liable for any damages, losses, or any other negative consequences of your actions. However, should you benefit from the knowledge imparted upon you by these videos, you are encouraged to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share this video with your friends, and leave a comment down below. Additionally, you are also encouraged to use the links in the video description to shop at my eBay store for awesome server goodies. Okay, so with that out of the way, in the last episode, I showed you how to use ZFS on a single drive using partitions to enable features like parity and self-healing that normally require more than one hard drive. I told you that if you open your minds to using partitions with ZFS, then new possibilities would become available to you. Today, I'm going to show you how to use ZFS with partitions on an array of 16 hard drives consisting of different drive sizes. What you see here is my Supermicro 836 server that I call the Flash which is one of the servers I use to flash all the IT mode HBA cards I sell in my eBay store. Today, I have it set up with a bunch of drives I pull from various other servers. On the left here, we have four four terabyte drives, then four eight terabyte drives, and then we have six 10 terabyte drives, and last, we have two 12 terabyte drives. So let's get on the computer, and I'll show you how to use this mix of drives with ZFS. If you've been around ZFS for a while, you know that each VDEV in a ZFS pool must be composed of drives of the same size, meaning you can't really mix 4TB, 8TB, 10TB, and 12TB drives into a single VDEV. And even if you do try, ZFS will automatically just use the lowest common denominator size, effectively wasting the space on the larger drives. So in a situation like this, it's best to group the drives of the same size into individual VDEVs, so in our current configuration, this might look something like this. In this setup, we have one VDEV with four four terabyte drives. And considering that there are only four drives, I'm choosing to use RAID Z1 to regain a little bit of space efficiency. The next VDEV, we have four eight terabyte drives. Uh, also again in RAID Z1 for the same reason. In the next VDEV, we have six 10 terabyte drives. And since we have more drives in this set, we'll go ahead and use my preferred and safer RAID Z2. And finally, in the last VDEV, we have a pair of 12 terabyte drives. And so really the only redundant configuration is to set them up as a mirror VDEV. In this configuration, we have four VDEVs in a single pool with a total capacity of 88 terabytes or about 80 terabytes. Also, we have a mixture of different types of VDEVs which might present us with some complications. So this is how a conventional ZFS user might configure this mix of drives. But this video is not about following convention, right? So instead, what we're going to do is use partitions to break up the physical drives in order to achieve what I think could be a more optimal ZFS pool configuration that looks like this. What we've done here is carved out four terabyte partitions out of the larger drives. We chose four terabytes since that's the lowest common denominator size that works with the first four four terabyte drives. In this way, we create a 16 by four terabyte RAID Z2 VDEV, which is identified in this shade of light blue. Next, we carve out another set of four terabyte partitions using the remaining drives, giving us a 12 by four terabyte RAID Z2 VDEV identified by the light green color. The remaining space is carved into two terabyte partitions, 
but these partitions require a little bit more thought because there are four of them that share the same physical drive and we don't want those to be in the same VDEV. Now in order to balance out these remaining two terabyte partitions, making sure none are on the same physical drive, and also to use the same RAID Z2 redundancy level, we're going to make them into two separate VDEVs of five by two terabyte partitions each, which are identified in the orange and magenta colors. In this configuration, we have four VDEVs, all with the same RAID Z2 redundancy and a total capacity of 100 terabytes or about 91 tebibytes. So let's go ahead and actually demonstrate how to do this. First, let's take a look at all the drives we have. So we see that our drives are shown as dev SDA through dev SDP. Before we do anything, let's make sure the drives are wiped by running wipefs on all partitions and the drive itself. All right, next we'll create a GPT label on each of the drives. Then let's create a four terabyte partition across all drives. We'll then create another set of four terabyte partitions across all the drives larger than four terabytes. So that will be drives E through P. Now for the remaining drives I through P, let's create some two terabyte partitions. And finally, we'll create two more two terabyte partitions on the remaining space on the two 12 terabyte drives. All right, let's take a look at our partitions. All right, everything looks pretty good. All right, with that done, now we can get going with creating our ZFS pool. Now, I know for those of you who are ZFS traditionalists, this is going to make you cringe. I'm okay with it, but if you need to take a moment or take a deep breath or just otherwise prepare yourself, go ahead, pause the video and do what you need to do to make it through this. All right, are you ready? Here we go. We'll start with the 16 by 4 terabyte partitions in RAID C2. And then the 12 by 4 terabyte partitions also in RAID C2. Next, we have to be careful with the 2 terabyte partitions. We'll grab three of the two terabyte partitions from the third partitions and two of the two terabyte partitions from the fourth partitions on those 12 terabyte drives. Finally, we'll grab the last two terabyte partitions and also make them into a RAID Z2. Now I'm adding the dash F flag here because the zpool command isn't going to like that we're, we have RAID Z2 VDEV with different widths. But that's not a really strict requirement, so we'll go ahead and override it.
All right, let's take a look at our Z pool. And let's take a look at the size. And there we have 88.9 terabytes available. So there we have it, folks. A ZFS pool made with mixed size drives, made of VDEVs, all with the same level of redundancy and using the full capacity of all drives. For those ZFS traditionalists, I hope you're still breathing. If you're still conscious, I'm glad you've made it this far. Thank you for staying with me. I hope all of you found this video interesting and hopefully it gets you thinking about creative ways to use ZFS. So question of the day, what are some of the ways you use ZFS that most would consider unconventional? Leave your comments below. Now, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to see more videos like this. And if you'd like to support my channel, check out my eBay store. I've got all sorts of goodies for your ZFS server. The links are in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.